Yeah, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for the invitation. And I apologize that I arrived late because uh, we have at the same time a meeting of the coordinators in the ENVY committee, and we needed uh, to discuss some uh, important issues. But now I'm here, and I'm happy to be here. I welcome the initiative, and uh, yes, the answer is very clear. The European Parliament very much supports energy efficiency, and we very much support a particular emphasis on energy efficiency in buildings. I think energy efficiency, and especially energy efficiency in buildings, is a win-win situation. We um, have a support for the environment. We can achieve our climate targets and other environmental targets as a relatively low cost. Energy efficiency um, is the element that decreases the costs of climate policy. And coming from Germany, like the Commissioner, I always say, when we want to do the so-called Energiewende, phasing out nuclear, but at the same time reducing our CO2 emissions, is no alternative than to focus on energy efficiency. Because a strategy only built on renewables, particular in the way that we are doing it uh, in Germany now, is very expensive. We will have um, a very delicate moment next Monday. The, uh, Officials will announce the cost of the German feed-in system for uh, renewable energies. And the estimate is that uh, an average consumer needs to pay more than 5 cents per kilowatt hours for the feed-in for renewables. Given that this is only a very small part of our overall energy consumption, for example, 50% of the costs of the, this feed-in system is photovoltaic. They have 3% of the whole electricity in Europe, which is 1% of the whole energy. So imagine you have this amount of money to invest in renovate buildings. You could get much more effect. So energy efficiency is the cost-efficient part um, <coughs> of our climate and energy strategy. This is valid for Germany. This is definitely also valid for Europe. <clears throat> and energy efficiency, especially in buildings, creates um, jobs, it supports the local economy, and it supports the European economy. Of course, there are many companies here that are selling their products all over the world, but Europe is very strong in energy efficiency, and that's why it's also from an economic point of view um, a win-win situation. The directive on energy efficiency was uh, not an easy task. And definitely many in the room think there is a disappointing result. Um, and I agree, we could have done better. But clearly, we had an alliance of the European Commission and the European Parliament for energy efficiency. And it has been the member states, the majority of the member states, it was not the fault of the Danish presidency, but many other member states, including my own, didn't really support uh, the proposal. And I think it was legitimate to criticize particular articles of the directive, but it was not okay just to say what one doesn't want. And uh, that's why we have a weak result, weaker than expected, but still we have a result. The first time the European Union has a legal framework for energy efficiency in all sectors, and the European Parliament managed to get the Article 3A agreed, which uh, asked the member states to have a strategy for energy efficiency in the building stock, and this is a long-term strategy. It's not only a 2020 strategy, it's a strategy for 2050. 
So I think that is the biggest achievement uh, that was not foreseen in the Commission proposal. We, we added on to the Commission proposal in this point, and it's an opportunity, but also a challenge, because the Article 3a is a starting point. Member states need to implement it, and I think we need to work together to get a real ambitious and good implementation of Article 3a. The financing is, of course, a challenge. It is a win-win situation for the economy, for the national economy, for the European economy, but uh, those people that need to invest in their buildings, they sometimes don't have the money. That's why the EPP in the Environment Committee supports a clear indication in the European budget for energy efficiency and similar priorities. Our shadow rapporteur, Mr. Fernandez, who is also a member of the Budget Committee, proposed to increase the figure by the European Commission. The Commission proposed 20% of the structural funds. We said it should even be 30%. I'm not sure that we will succeed with this, but I think there will be a clear signal also when the new financial perspective is adopted that Europe does its bit to support this also in a financial way. But on the other hand, we need to be realistic. The European budget covers more or less 1% of the gross national income in Europe. So when you have a huge task, you cannot depend only on the European budget. Member states need to do their bit. And there we have discussed also in the energy efficiency directive an important element. We have the emission trading and part of the emission trading's uh, target was also to generate money for investment in energy efficiency. That is clearly in the directive and uh, we have now a problem because the price of the emission trading of the ETS uh, allowances is low. It's very low. For more than one year, it is less than 10 euros. That is a problem for the sector that is covered by the ETS because there is no real incentive to invest in low carbon technology. But there is also the problem that member states who build their national strategy, including their energy efficiency strategy, on the income of the ETS, that they don't have this income anymore. That's why the European Parliament asked the Commission to propose measures to change uh, the ETS. This is very controversial. There's a lot of opposition, and I cannot say how finally the discussion will end, but I want to make you aware that this is directly linked with the possibility of member states to invest in energy efficiency. So when you have an interest on support for energy efficiency, you should have an interest in an ETS that delivers also revenues. But we should not only depend on the European Union and on the member states' budget, we should also have investment of the private sector. And the Energy Efficiency Directive uh, gives some hints that we have sometimes hurdles for investment in energy efficiency, which needs to be addressed, and that would be uh, one of the most important issues in implementing the directive. Most of the investment uh, pays back in a quite short time, but somebody needs to do the investment and deliver uh, the money for the investment. And here we have some, some hurdles. For example, um, the municipalities are in financial difficulties. When they do not invest, in energy efficiency. It will be even more expensive in the long run, but sometimes the, the regulation in the member states is that they are not allowed to invest in energy efficiency because that is, of course, in the first year, it is cost. We need public-private partnership and we, knew, we need a realistic legal framework also that you are not forced to waste energy for, for more years because you are not allowed to invest when it definitely pays off. 
Yeah, last point I have been asked to address is the uh, energy roadmap that Commissioner Oettinger presented some months ago. We are discussing it now in the European Parliament. And just yesterday, the European Parliament's Environment Committee adopted its opinion on the roadmap. And there we have also um, some debates. You know, we just have adopted the Energy Efficiency Directive mainly addressing the targets for 2020. Um, but already now we have a debate, do we need a European strategy for energy efficiency beyond 2020? Some argue that we should uh, concentrate on one, on one instrument, that is the emission trading. Um, I think there is a point to say that companies that are covered by the emission trading should not be covered by additional requirements from other directives. That's why we have a provision in the Energy Efficiency Directive which uh, allows to take this into account. But many people forget that more than 50% of the emissions that we have in Europe are not covered by the ETS, and that is mainly the building sector. So a European strategy that says we only need one instrument, that would mean that we cover the buildings by the ETS, and I didn't see any proposal uh, how this realistically can be done, because buildings are small units, and in the ETS we are covering very big emitters, uh, and uh, I'm not sure that it is really practically possible to cover the building sector by the ETS. And if this is true, we need other instruments. And that's why we need a long-term strategy for energy efficiency in buildings. The Parliament insisted on this in the negotiation, and we have this Article 3a, but I think we need to highlight this point also in the energy roadmap debate. That's what the Environmental Committee did. We want an energy efficiency strategy, because what is true for now, what I said, energy efficiency is a win-win situation. It is cost efficient when we want to achieve our targets. That is not only true for the time between now and 2020. It is definitely true when we look at the longer perspective. So the European Parliament's Environmental Committee is in favor of energy efficiency being a part of also our long-term energy strategy. And I'm happy if you here in the room, this conference today, could also support this issue. Thank you very much. <laughs>